Hi there, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing a, an AI video. If you're sick of AI videos, because there has been so many of them on YouTube lately, then feel free to skip this video. But today we're actually going to take a look at AI and astrology. And this video was also highly inspired by the video made by Alchemist Apollo. He approached chat GPT and asked it um, in a way questions that an astrologer would usually answer in order to see whether um, AI could replace astrologers. So that video got me thinking and I think my final answer before we get into what we're going to ask uh, AI today, my final answer would be no. Uh, AI will not replace astrologers. And I guess some of the reasons and some of the things that we'll get into now with asking certain questions will we'll answer why. So the only thing that I have done with ChatGPT so far is I have asked it, can you read my birth chart for me? And the reason I asked it this is because that is the one thing that astrologers do. That is one of the services, one of the main services that a lot of astrologers offer is read, giving personalized birth chart readings. So to me, the, sequen the, the big question of will astrologers be replaced by AI was basically, can AI give a personalized birth chart reading? And AI said no. <laughs> AI said he doesn't, he or she doesn't have access to personal information, such as birth charts. So... Let's take a look. I also want to try maybe rewording the question because I heard that can help. Okay, so the question I have is, my birthday is June 20th, blah, 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 in Toronto, Canada. And what are my main life themes according to astrology? And the reason why I'm wording the question like this is because one of the main ways I approach astrological readings is by going through all of the placements in the chart and then starting to see if there are repeating themes sort of confirmed by multiple placements and from that a sort of story originates about the client's life about the person who I'm reading for so I'm curious if chat gpt can answer this let's see all right, so, so far it is giving sort of your sun sign which is gemini then it's sort of talking a little bit more about what Gemini is associated with. Okay, so that's, I think, quite basic uh, and something you can find on the internet nowadays. It does say that it cannot do it yet again. Uh, your life themes could also be influenced by the positions of other planets at the time of your birth, which is true, as well as their relationship to each other. A detailed birth chart interpretation would take all of these factors into account and provide more information about your personality traits and life themes. I love how it gave the disclaimer again that it gave in the first part that, by the way, astrology is not a science. <laughs> I didn't ask you that, ChatGPT, but thank you. Okay, so I think indeed asking these two questions, I mean, we could go on the rest of the day rephrasing our question but I think what both of these sort of prove to us or at least prove to me is that AI is able to provide this sort of separate info when it comes to astrology and that's something that Alchemist Apollo showed in his video as well that you can ask it you know what does the sun in Gemini mean you can ask it what does a Lilith in the ninth house um, in the sign of Leo mean. But when you ask it to start to sort of look at all of the themes, all of the influences put together, it's not really able to do that. And I think this is where human astrologers have the upper hand because we're able to take a look at this huge amount of information and start to pull out some, some themes. There's actually one more thing I want to try before we move into our next reason why AI will not replace astrologers. 
and that's maybe trying to see if it could do predictive astrology because right now I only asked for my natal chart. So one of the other really big types of readings that astrologers give are readings that are more on the predictive side. So at the end of the year or uh, during somebody's birthday, you sort of sit down with them and look a year ahead on what they can expect and what those life themes should might be that they're experiencing. So what I thought we could also try is to ask AI, again, giving the birth information, and then what is the focus for me in 2023? And I actually specified a little bit more now because there's different predictive techniques. Um, and I want to ask according to transits, not to progressions, for example. Let's see if you can actually do this for us. All right, so it goes into explaining what transits are. And that's fine and dandy. <laughs> okay, so now it's listing some of the key astrological transit, uh, transits um, in 2023. Yeah, so Saturn is going to move through Aquarius. I'm curious because technically in the middle, well, not even the middle, in March, Saturn is going to move towards Pisces. So it's interesting that it's saying here Aquarius. Yeah, Uranus is moving through Taurus. That's indeed um, nice that it could sort of point out those three and Jupiter moving through Pisces. Indeed, Jupiter later does eventually move into Aries. Um, so that one is also a little bit behind. And I like that actually, because it could pick any of the transits, but it knows to pick the heavy hitters, and that, that's awesome. However, if we take a look at each of the um, sort of bullet points, so like I love in, in, for example, when it describes Saturn moving through Aquarius, it is talking about structure and stability, as well as opportunities for growth and personal development. But it's not bringing in the the house in in this conversation, right? It's just more talking about Saturn, the planet of Saturn, and the sign of Aquarius. But it's not bringing out, you know, is this happening in my tenth house, and I'm going to see some big uh, restrictions in my career, for example. So, yeah, it is limited. One of the other ways, or one of the other reasons why I do not think AI can replace astrologers is because it removes the human touch. It, and what I mean by that is it removes the personal story. A lot of what, maybe not for me because I'm quite young, but I think what a lot of astrologers end up doing as they're building up their knowledge is also from pure experience, living with the transit and starting to understand, living through a Saturn return and being able to really understand what it means and relaying that in a new way. Um, or perhaps being able in a reading to give a sort of personal story or a personal example um, so that the other person could relate to it a bit more. So I think this aspect, we can take a look and see if AI could do something in that realm. The question we have is quite specific. So can you write a story? Because I think this will help it in having that sort of personal example. About a young woman, that would be me, living in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, that would be me, in 2023 to 2025 going through her Saturn return in Pisces in her 8th house. So this is actually all true to my chart. Let's see if it's able to give us a more personal touch about it. All right, it's Hannah. Hannah has been f um, searching for her place in the world. And lately she's been feeling restless. Little does she know, she's about to embark on a journey of self-discovery and transformation as she goes through her Saturn return. All right. <laughs> I'm hooked. Let's see. So her Saturn return, Hannah's Saturn return, 
is a time when you'll be faced with challenges and opportunities for growth and maturity. Yeah, as it's moving through her eighth house, she'll be grappling with themes of emotional depth, transformation, and the mysteries of the unconscious mind. All right. At first, Hannah is overwhelmed. Uh, she feels that she's been thrown into a sea of uncertainty, struggling to keep her head on above water. As she begins to confront the challenges, she realizes she's been given the chance to dive deep into herself. Hannah starts to explore her passions and talents. She lets go of limiting beliefs and patterns that have been holding her back. She realizes that she has the power to shape her own life. She starts to connect with the spiritual community, finds a sense of belonging and purpose she's never felt before. I love how it also concludes with, by 2025, she's more confident, self-assured, and in touch with her authentic self. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Actually, I really like this one. I really like the story prompt. Um, it definitely helps with making it a little bit more personal. I still can't help but feel that when I'm reading these words, it, it does feel a bit... Yeah, a bit high level, a bit, like it's not touching in my emotions, you know? Not the way I think it would when I sit opposite from an astrologer that's really getting into the nitty gritty, right? Um, even in just the tonalities that they're expressing or really talking in this compassionate way. I'm sorry, but you cannot feel com compassion coming from AI. And I think... As we move into a world of technology, I think you already see it, that people are really seeking to interact with individuals, to um, really have a connection with somebody. And I, and I do think that will still be appreciated in the world of astrology. One of the interesting things <laughs> that I was thinking about when watching um, Alchemist Apollo's video was actually, he mentioned how it would be nice, for example, with uh, Chiron or with some of the questions that he would ask AI, how we can actually sort of speed up our search process because instead of going through tons of pages on Google and uh, spending hours sifting through all the different information on Chiron, instead of doing that, we just type this question into AI and it sort of searches the internet and, and gives us this one answer. And <laughs> while I was listening to that, the entire time I was thinking, but I actually like doing the search. I love this sort of exploration and going through pages, going uh, on Reddit to hear the personal stories of somebody experiencing a certain transit. I love also actually seeing the similarities and differences between how different uh, astrologers explain different transits or different uh, natal charts or aspects for example and I feel like that really enriches my knowledge and that's one thing that I feel like AI cannot replace because I, I don't know if it can give us the sort of breadth of knowledge that we experience with a Google search for example Especially looking at a sort of one answer that it gives us when we ask a question, it, it can sort of feel like the, the answer is the holy truth or something. And what I love about searching, doing my own search, doing my own exploration, is that I, I can choose <laughs> what is the truth. It sounds like... I don't want to be told what to do or what to think, which is true. I am an Aquarius. But let's see if we can actually test this with AI. So I thought one interesting question could be, are there conflicting thoughts on the sixth house in astrology? And what are they? Because then it might just say yes and not explain them. <laughs> let's see. So it is confirming that there are conflicting thoughts. Love it. Okay, so the role of work. Some astrologers view the sixth house of, about work, job, career, daily tasks, while others see it more as 
uh, daily activities, self-care, health routines. Some astrologers believe that the sixth house uh, is sort of an indicator of our physical health, but others believe that it that influence is more indirect um, because, of course, our daily habits and routines end up being our health or influencing our health. And then the balance of the sixth house. There is some disagreement about whether it's negative and po or positive aspects. A lot of astrologers see uh, the sixth house as one that's mainly a challenging or a difficult house, but others see it as a house of growth and fulfillment. You know what? This is also not a bad answer. I gotta say, I'm actually impressed with this one, but that's that's the thing. If I was to want to come across the conflicting information, I would have to really be self-aware of it and search for it and actively ask that question. And I think perhaps for some people that don't know that there is conflicting knowledge, that don't know that there isn't one holy source of what certain aspects mean, a lot of astrology is about interpretation, that I do think the this, this sort of setup of asking a question and getting an answer can lead to a bit of just maybe mistaking what is the truth or what is the answer, because a lot of times there is not one answer to anything. <laughs> I sound very Aquarius right now, I know. Cool, all right, that was actually really fun. And you know what? I came into this video not a big fan of AI, I gotta admit. I just think it's a bit hyped up. That's my own opinion. But I gotta say, with the last two questions, asking more of a personal story and asking um, about sort of the conflicting opinions, I think it did deliver. But still, my final answer is gonna be no, AI cannot replace astrologers. I think we're incredibly valuable. I think we bring such a personal connection, personal story. We bring a breadth of knowledge. And we can actually really get into the specifics of this person, which AI cannot do. At least not yet. <laughs> Let me know down below what you think. Do you think AI is going to change the astrology world? Is it going to replace the jobs of astrologers? I'm curious to hear all of your opinions. If you have another 10-15 minutes to spare and want to watch another super fun video, I recommend this one where I try to guess um, the zodiac signs of celebrities and it goes terribly wrong. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.